I think that after 9-11, President Bush uh, began an effort to understand what happened. Mm -hmm. Why did it happen? Why uh, this hatred and hatred of what? Uh, and why from Saudi Arabia in particular, so many of the, of the uh, bombers? Um, and I think he came to a view which Steve described. Um, that is that it was, and it was a view that was beginning to be um, more broadly expressed in the region. The famous 2002 Arab Human Development Report from, uh, from UNDP, that there was a freedom deficit in the region. That is that what the, uh, what the bin Laden, for example, was most against in the whole world was against the Saudi regime, um, and that you could you could you could see this as a as a um, a problem in the in the political, especially political organization of these regimes, um, and he we we saw this term freedom deficit, and um, I think that analysis was correct. Uh, and it led the president to the view that these regimes were not actually stable. Now, uh, he said, you know, the, the change is the work of generations. He did not say, you mark my words in a year, this is all, this will all be gone. We thought it would take a lot longer. Um, but I think the fundamental analysis mm -hmm. that these were not stable regimes because they relied exclusively on force was correct. And I would make an exception here to some extent for the monarchies which have some legitimacy, varying degrees of legitimacy, but not zero. But in these, what I would call the fake republics, what did they have to say for themselves? You know, they didn't have monarchic legitimacy. Uh, they were repressive and violent, and they weren't producing, if you want to compare it to China. Uh, you couldn't say, well, look over a generation, the number of people who have been moved out of poverty. No arguments, really, in favor of these regimes except inertia, which, after all, had had worked. I mean, I remember in discussions of this, you could talk about why, in theory, they were all going to fall. But we've been hearing about that for a long time. And the only, in the Arab world, the only regime that had fallen was the one that we brought down in Iraq. The others, decade after decade after decade. Um, now, um, I think uh, the president began to act on this. You remember the, um, the NED speech the 20th anniversary of the National Endowment for Democracy, 2003, I think, and his second inaugural. And for Egypt, uh, Condi Rice's speech at American University, Cairo, in 2005. Now, could we have done more? Um, yes. And the pressures against doing more, Dennis has referred to some of, they're very great because we, you know, the United States government is not an NGO. An NGO which has the luxury of having one interest, religious freedom, political freedom, anti-slavery, whatever it is. The United States government has a number of interests. Dennis mentioned that a, a number of his conversations with President Mubarak were in the context of seeking Arab-Israeli peace. Uh, we had the same, I'll call it a problem, which is that once in 2007 and 8, the administration was pushing hard again at and after Annapolis for an Israeli-Palestinian peace treaty, um, the view of President Mubarak softened because he was, in fact, very useful. And indeed, the Egyptians still are useful. Now it's the scaf in the Israeli-Palestinian context. Um, so I would say in the long run, I think this was, a, this was a mistake. Someone who saw some, who was in Cairo recently and met with um, secularists, liberals, and Muslim Brotherhood officials said to me that all of them said, we remember very fondly 2004, 5, 6, when you were really pushing Mubarak, because he did respond by opening the political space yeah. some. Um, I think that had we pursued a policy over, you know, 35, 40 years of, of greater pressure on these regimes, um, more political space would have been created which would have benefited us in the sense that people would not just remember 2004, 5, 6, but say, you were always on our side against these regimes. And it would benefit them, because what's happened now is 
um, regimes where there was no politics. Tunisia, Libya, Egypt, um, now are open for politics and they have no practice. They haven't moved slowly and steadily into greater degrees of political activity. They go from zero to 100 miles an hour. And maybe if the United States had over five or six presidents, um, we can go back to Ford um, if we want, or General Grant, um, <laughs> maybe had we been pushing harder all along, um, maybe there would have been greater political space and the shock of trying to develop it uh, from, from nothing would be uh, less.